FedEx just came. We'll, uh, hang on just a second. This is a new CPU. Well, not new, you can obviously see it's used, but slow, carefully, make sure there's no damaged pins. Last one I got had some damaged pins on it. This looks like it's in pristine condition. That's the new 3840QM processor for my old laptop here. I've got a I've got a 2920XM in it right now. Shutting down, what the hell is going on here? There we go. Don't look at the so so exactly what I'm running right now. Yeah, that new processor should. Um, it's got a lower TDP because it's got a newer architecture. So it's 22 nanometers as opposed to 32 nanometers. It's, so it's uh, closer together, so they don't need as much power. So that's actually, it's faster and it's got uh, 45 watt TDP as opposed to uh, 55 watt TDP, which TDP is basically the amount of, of heat created. So, um, I was experienced. I think I was experiencing a, just a touch of uh, thermal throttling, um, which your computer gets too hot, so it starts. It slows itself down, so it doesn't cook itself. So when I was uh, when I was rendering videos, um, it it would only go to two point one seven gigahertz, so it was just like eighty seven percent of the uh, the peak. So it, it, eight cores or eight, eight threads at uh, at 2.17 is a hell of a lot faster than than two cores and four threads at 2.4, which it was 2.39, whatever you know, whatever whatever it actually physically actually runs at. So this this new one's supposed to be 2.8 gigahertz, and it's supposed to run cooler, so it should be dedicated actually 2.8 gigahertz. And uh, so I figured, yeah, well, well, so we'll see if that one works in there, and if, you know, if not, no big deal. So all right, guys. Here's kind of a little workstation here. I got some Q-tips, alcohol. Uh, I actually have some spare processors uh, here. This is actually the 2640, and there's the 2370, and here's the 20 2920XM, and here. Is a 3840. So here's the old hard drive that came out of it. Or since replaced that with an SSD. Here's a SATA cable, SATA USB cable, and oh, here's the case that the uh, here's the case the SSD came in. So I guess it could just do one of these. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how to pull apart an HP Pavilion Z6. Laptop. All right, first things first. Pull the battery out. One K. 
captured screw. Well, pull this cover off. Unplug the hard drive. Set it aside for right now. Actually, you can go ahead and pull this pin off now while you're at it. Throw a hard drive. And basically just uh, start taking out screws. Uh, optical drive here. First. Hold on. Save the screws if possible. Disk drive. And basically just oh well. Here's your network card. Sorry. This is your wireless network card. You may, may make sure that goes in the right spot. Here's your RAM. This happens to be DDR3. I'll go ahead and start pulling now. Pulling screws. All right, once you've got all the screws removed, we have a nice little stack up in there, and they are actually labeled the length. That's in four long, that's six and a half long. There's only two different sizes. The ones on the outside all get the longer ones. And most of the most of the other ones are only by 4.5 millimeters. The other ones are six millimeter long, or I guess six and a half millimeter. So, I mean, once you get all those out, Flip it over. There we go, finally got it. ribbon cables you flip up there we go flip up see how it's down flip up the black now there are more screws to take out looks like five more in this level and then you can take the entire top off you can tell don't forget about the little guy down here and also unplug this. That's for the USB. It actually holds the USB slider over here. And then
top heavy now. Now you can pick up this whole piece. Actually, I left that screw in there, but um, so I couldn't quite reach the recessed little area. All right. Now, we've got one more. This is that USB deal I was telling you guys about. You can see these little ribbons attached to these. You grab the, by the center of the ribbon and pull straight up. You see that? I mean, this is kind of wrinkled up, but grab by the ribbon and just pull. Oh, shoot. Seems to be wanting to be kind of stubborn, so we'll just try to pry up on it a little bit. All right, make sure nothing else is attached anywhere. And then you can start taking off your screws. See, so 14 and 15 inch. That's for a 17 inch uh, laptop. So it looks like, I guess that's the only, oh. I believe that is the only one left. All right, here is where, gets a little top heavy, but there we go. Now you can just pick up Oh, sorry, there's one more plug back here. Pick up on it like this and slide out and slide it out at, a, at an angle. See, it goes in at a downward angle like this. Pick it up and now you have your display. So we will set this to the side because this is what we're looking for set the actual laptop to the side because we're looking for the motherboard. All right, what's on the bottom side of the motherboard is what we're after. All right, the processor is behind these four screws. You can see the little heat pipe and a fan and a little heat sink with some vents on it. So unplug your, your fan from the header there. And these are captured screws. They are actually numbered too. I think you're supposed to undo them in four, three, two, one, but I don't really think it matters a whole lot. All right. And then There's a little bit of sticky tape right here that holds the fan down. But there's your cooling fan, your entire cooling solution here. Now there, you can see the thermal compound, the thermal paste. There and there. And that is what I got the alcohol and the cotton swabs for. So I think for right now we'll go ahead and leave this in here. And we'll go ahead and clean off the thermal compound of this 2920XM processor. So, hang on just a second. Alright, got a little bit of alcohol on here. And you just the 
the first one I primarily try to just scrape off the harder stuff. should end up being pretty close to a mirror finish finish now before I pull this out of here let's blow on it real quick to cool it off and then to dry it off this is an i7 2920xm that way we know because there aren't any really not really any uh, distinguishing markers. All right, now you see the the die on this compared to the die on the yeah. use like this processor. This is it, my anyway. You can see that's the die on this. See how the, the die itself, the shiny part, is much, much, um, much bigger on the 2920. Fixed to a flathead. And Sorry. So you turn this 180 degrees. And then your processor... Will slip right out. Now this one had a bunch of pins bent very, very badly. We well, can see them or not. Where are they? I don't remember which corner it was. But they were bent very badly. It must be the ones in this corner. They kind of glare a little bit differently. They were bent very badly on, they were damaged in shipping. So I had to straighten those out with a razor blade and a pair of tweezers. But I had to get all those pins to line up with each of those holes. All right, now when you reinsert, you look for a little little diamond over there and there's a di corresponding diamond on on this processor so you should just be able to set it in place and it should drop right in with no resistance at all you turn this down and that's installed now I need to clean the, the old thermal compound off of this and the heat sink the cooler so I'm all get my my cap full again of alcohol Let's see if I can do a long pour here no not at all it's terrible I think this is more of like a stock style thermal compound I'd imagine and that icy diamond is a pretty good high quality replacement
right, that looks pretty clean. Set that aside right now. And naturally, I It's nice and clean now. And we will go ahead and mark this one. Close enough, I'll figure, I'll know what it is. It's an I-73840 QM. Alrighty, now we can go ahead and start, we can go ahead and put the stock cooler back on. Well, first of all, let's put away the, put away the alcohol. I made a mess all over the, anyway. I need two hands for this, but okay. I need two hands for this, but you need to put a, uh, some thermal compound the size of a grain of rice on, or a grain of rice on here. back on put that back over there Get them all started first, just like on anything. And then tighten them down. Sure the last one's torqued down. Reinstall your fan header. Reinstall your fan header. Now we can start the reassembly process. Grab your empty case. Make sure there aren't any cables underneath. Fall into place on a couple of the, the standoff right here and down here, and then go ahead and put in your screw and go ahead and reinstall any plugs. This one goes underneath down here.
Now, you put <sighs> we attach this. Says a six and a half millimeter screw, so a long guy. Hang on just a second. Tighten that up. And all these other five, those are all four millimeter. You do not put one in here yet. Actually, it comes from the other direction to go to the center of the keyboard. Now the, the ribbon cable, cable for your keyboard. Flip up the flip up the black clip. Slip it in place. Snap it back down everywhere. Flip it back over. We can go ahead and start with the uh, start with the RAM. Push down until it clicks. Put it at an angle. Push down until it clicks. Hold your uh, antenna wires out of the way. Well, hold them out of the way. There we go. All right. Rams in. Network cards in. There's two underneath, underneath the hard drive. Slip the hard drive back in. Slip the uh, CD-ROM drive back in. Put a short screw in here. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. And I'll put these two on. And then put my uh, cover back on. And put the rest of the housing screws on. And then uh, we'll go ahead and fire this guy up. See that little t tab there? There's actually two of them. Slip in there. Fold down. Push forward. And this captured screw.
threads down. I put the rest of the screws outside. Alright. Last thing left is the battery. See if she turns on. That's a good sign right away, right? Going from completely turned off to uh, don't want to see my password. All right. Let's go to. Uh, DX Diag. That was still starting up. I got some uh, thermal compound on my, my phone. Anyway, so that is how you uh, swap out a CPU. So, um, this is supposed to run at 45 watts TDP as opposed to 55 watts. So, even though it is faster, it's made on a more efficient architecture and it actually runs cooler than the, uh, the older stuff. It also uses less power because uh, it's based on 22 nanometers as opposed to 32 nanometers. So the components are smaller and closer together, requiring less power to go between them. So, um, yeah, it's it's running uh, right now. It's 50, 61 percent maximum frequency. We'll have to see, we'll have to compare it. Oh shoot, you know what? Let's go to Movie Maker real quick. The last project I had. Preparing files, which could take a little while. Nine minute fifty five second. Now click on save movie for HD display. Let's do uh, we're just going to see just how fast. running it full load you can see them all you can see all of them spike all seven cores and I'm running the blue line is it uh, the maximum frequency 99% usage we're at 2% complete already Give it a minute to heat up or burn in a little bit. And that screwdriver 
the screwdriver is not annoying at all when it rolls. Okay, 3%. Like I said, it's uh, still, still blowing cool out here. at 100% total all threads are being fully utilized Starting to heat up just a touch. See how the memory's doing. Oh, this is the RAM. Here is my SSD. Where I'm not really on the internet at all right now, so zero percent network utilization. Let's click on uh, Internet Explorer real quick. Well, I got to tell you, when I first started, when I fir first hit save movie. It was 8.14, so it's been 31 minutes. Now it's 94%. I had absolutely no intention of uh, letting this thing go the entire way, but now I'm just kind of curious just how fast it can go. It's been 31 minutes and 95%. Um, on a 39-minute long movie, or 39-minute, 55 seconds. So the 40-minute movie's taking 30, right at 32 minutes now, 96% complete. So I can render... Uh, 1080p video in less time than the the uh, the length of the actual movie, so that's going to save me an an abundance of time over the original one, which was it would just take hours and hours and hours. Um, I also forgot that it's actually a a quicker computer. I have the the power profile that it's it's quicker than you have when you have it plugged in rather than on battery. So I I plugged it in and I messed around with the uh, Messed around with some, uh, looking up some stuff on the internet, and then I ter happened to look and see if it's actually doing pretty well. So, 32 minutes at 98% complete. So, it's going pretty quickly. So, it's, uh, I'm very, very happy with this. I mean, it is getting warm down here. You can see it was 99% right now. It's at, it's throttling down to 2.69 gigahertz. The max is 2.8. 99%. I started at four, uh, 14 after. 33 minutes. 100% complete. So it's uh. Yeah, completed the whole thing that rendered the complete movie in 33 minutes. And that was with me screwing around. So I'm confident that, uh, like I said, with the power profile, that it would be, uh, that can absolutely do it in a half hour. A, a 40 minute long movie in a half hour. Um, which is... Oh, which is awesome. I think it's awesome. And once once it finishes, you can see the usage drops all the way back down. Let's open the resource monitor back up. Oh, well, it's, it's going to be all the way down. But so a little spike and then bloop, all the way down. A little bloop. Feel some heat coming out. 
the glass is a little bit warm right here, but and this stupid screwdriver again. So anyway, I'm I'm uh, I'm thrilled to death with this thing. Uh, I think I think my last one took I think it was right about an hour with the the twenty nine twenty. So I think as far as usage, this computer is way more capable and. Like I said, uh, it's way more capable now. This processor cost me $139. I, I ordered it on a Friday, Friday afternoon. If, if I would have ordered it during the week, like it didn't even ship until Monday morning. And it's today's Wednesday afternoon, the day before Thanksgiving, or Wednesday evening now. But it, it was delivered this afternoon. Um, so two day shipping basically. After, you know, like I said, I ordered it on Friday night. Didn't, they didn't ship it until uh, Monday morning, but uh, just thrilled to death. The, the computer's been turned on for 42 minutes, and 30 some of it was, 33 of it was uh, running Movie Maker. So I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to death with this computer. It, it, I think it's it's way more capable than what it ever was before with that 2370M, which is 2.4 gigahertz. But half the processors, or half the, half the cores and and half the threads. So, essentially, it's slower, slower core uh, uh, IPS instructions per per uh, second, IP, yeah, IPS, IPC, and it's uh, got half the number of cores. So, it was painfully slow, and now it's. Surprisingly quick for an old laptop. So anyway, um, I guess uh, now you know how to pull apart HP laptop, and I will be compiling this <laughs> this uh, all this footage, which is I'm sure it's awesome because it's real easy to get in there with the one hand and try to put these little bitty tiny little screws. So uh, now you have everything you need to know. Like I said, you can buy used processors very cheaply. Um, check and make sure your socket is correct. Um, but other than that, whatever you order, it, I was concerned that it, it the BIOS wouldn't recognize wouldn't recognize a a newer CPU or a different CPU. Like if it wasn't wasn't configured for it, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, recognize this this actual processor. But I've I've heard horror stories about that, and I I was already running the updated bi most recent uh, BIOS version, which is from 2013, and this thing just dropped right in. You saw it drop right in, which is it was the same socket PGA 988, and like I said, it uh, it works. It fired right up. Right after I uh, put the battery back in, hit the power, hit the power button and uh, fired right up. So it, I did have to re-enter my my uh, Wi-Fi password. That's why I didn't have internet right or right away earlier. But uh, yeah, this thing's phenomenal. I I love it. Uh, I could have got a 39, 39 something CPU, but that like, like once again the the TDP. The voltage or the wattage was uh, a little higher than what my little stock fan cooler can could handle. So, even this is a, you know kind of borderline on it because it does create more heat naturally. But if I'm only going to be doing it for a half hour at a time, I'm not really worried about about uh, cooking this thing. So I think it's uh, and I have a few backups just in case I do cook a, <laughs> a processor. <laughs> But you can you can find used processors all day long on uh, on eBay. Not so much Amazon, but on eBay you can find them all over the place. And I haven't had an issue yet. I mean, they send them right to you. Uh, make sure you check the check the uh, the ratings, the seller ratings and stuff. If they have a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of bad reviews or reviews from the same person or something like that, then you, then you might want to be a little leery of them, but. They've got these old processors all over the place. So 
uh, I would recommend if you if you need some, need a quicker computer or you want a quicker computer for gaming or anything, I, I'd go ahead and uh, you know I'd go ahead and check out uh, eBay for used processors and slap them on, and let's see what they can do because you saw a price on there, a price comparison actually. Sixty-eight dollars. I recommend the price. <laughs> yeah, so Forty-five watts TDP, fifty-five, thirty-five is the original. I think my cooler is only designed for a thirty-five watt. This is a ten sixty-six DDR RAM. I have eight gigabytes in there. I could get some sixteen sixteen hundred RAM. I could get two 16 gigabyte sticks, but it's so pricey, and I'm only running. Well, let's see here. I'm using 24% right now of my RAM. Even when I was doing that video it was, it was about 47 percent so when you're looking for a computer make sure basically the last number is the same that's all you really got to know if it's a 988 988 Anyway, that's the differences between the processors. So, uh, like I said, I'm thrilled to death with the uh, the difference in this new processor. So, it runs, you know, three quarters of a of a gigahertz faster. Uh, uh, I guess half a gigahertz faster per per core, which that's four gigahertz total than my 2920 XM and it does it with less heat and a hell of a lot less time so like I said I think it was I think it took a, a little over an hour or right at an hour or so for the uh, 2920 to do it so 3840 hell yeah that's that's awesome I think I found the perfect perfect processor for this for this uh, CPU so or for this this laptop Remember, it's a little bit more than a an i3 inside. Oh, it's not Windows 7 either. Neither of those are. That is a HP Premier experience. All right, guys. With that, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's a car. It doesn't matter if it's a truck. It doesn't matter if it's a, an old laptop. Just get out there and uh, wrench on something.